Praise the Lord. All right, so as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of worship. We thank you for what you've done in our lives already. We're asking, Lord, as we get into your word now, that we receive your word at face value in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, that your word will bear fruit in every life. Those who are not saved, you bring them to the knowledge of real salvation in Jesus' name. And those of us who are saved, the Lord, we're asking that the grace of God will so work in our lives to produce real holiness and purity of life in Jesus' name. For all our ministers and all our members, everyone associated with this church, we pray, Lord, your sanctifying grace will be so real that we'll be rapturable in Jesus' name. We don't know when the Lord will come. We say, Lord, anytime he will come, morning, noon, or night, we pray we we'll remain in the grace of God and the godliness that will qualify us, even on that final day in Jesus' name. We pray that the spirit of defeat, making people to rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall, take it from every life in Jesus' name. Make, it, make us triumphant and make us obedient to your word all the days of our lives. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 12, verse 13 and verse 14. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet feet and suitable to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. In verse 13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. As we look at the word this morning, we're looking at our heavenly citizenship and eternal rewards if anybody worships god at all he needs to understand the reason we worship god we are connected with him is so that we'll have relationship with him here on earth a relationship with him in eternity in heaven at a death there is a place people go those who have been with the Lord and those who are converted children of God, sons of God, and those who live to the glory of his name, they'll be on the right hand side, they'll be in heaven and live with God forever. But those who refuse to know God and those who die in their sins or die in backsliding, they will be on the other side, far away from God. It's a place called hell and it's hellfire. And they will suffer forever and ever. And those of us that know that knowledge, we have that knowledge of the truth. We want to make sure that this, at this time of opportunity, the day of grace, that we're citizens of the heavenly kingdom. We want to make sure too that we're living the life that will help us and qualify us. That on that day when Christ shall come, will not be found missing. And the very first step we take is what we have read about over here. Paul the Apostle writing to the Colossians. And he says, he was giving thanks to the Father. Because the Father had made him and those Colossian believers and those of us who believe today. He's made us worthy. Made us fit. Made us suitable. Made us meet. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Sinners are in darkness. But when the sinner in darkness come to Jesus Christ, the light of the world, it turns away from every form of darkness, every form of sin, every form of evil. And then he believes of the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who becomes the light of his life. He becomes a child of God. He becomes a believer. He becomes a sage. He becomes a convert. He becomes a Christian. He becomes a disciple following after the Lord Jesus Christ. And he walks in the light. He doesn't walk in darkness anymore. He now has the inheritance of the saints in light. 
And we're told in verse 13 that he has deliverance from the power of darkness. The power that held him down to the works of darkness in the past. All those powers are broken. And now he's set free. And then it says that he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Is no more being controlled by the kingdoms of this world, but the kingdom of his dear son. He says, you know, we have redemption, is purchased, is bought, is cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And then too, all the sins are forgiven and forgotten. Citizens of the heavenly kingdom, it becomes in First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Again, that throws light on what will become? Who will become? When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ Out of darkness into his marvelous light Out of evil into his marvelous life Out of sin into his marvelous salvation Out of a righteousness into a marvelous righteousness We're chosen that he is, he calls us I'm sure you have heard the word of Christ before that said, many are called, but few are chosen. Those ones that repent, those ones that give their lives to the Lord, they are chosen, and it says, we're a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Royal is kingly. That means we come to the priesthood of the Lord and to the kingdom of the Lord. A holy nation. That he is would not remain unrighteous, ungodly, unholy when he calls us. He cleanses, he converts, he, he changes our lives, and we become a part of a holy nation, a peculiar people. Our lives are distinct and different from the people, from that of the people of the world. Why? Because we become peculiar. Very different and distinct from the people around us. In Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us. Peter testified he had got the precious faith. And then he testified, I wasn't the only one. Other people too had got this like precious faith. That means they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ the same way Peter had believed. The same way all the other apostles believed. Then it says, it's through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody needs the Savior. Everybody needs salvation. And Peter said, I had salvation. I have salvation. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nobody so religious on earth that doesn't need salvation. Nobody so successful on earth that does not need salvation. Peter said, I got it. And he has become my Savior. And the people he was writing to, he said, you've got it too. And it's become our Savior. In verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The knowledge of God, that's what he gives us in his holy writ that he is in the Bible and of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in verse 3, according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness. It says, through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, 
that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature that tells us another thing we don't just have forgiveness we also have the nature of christ in us you see there's some people that think that we're just to be sinning and being forgiven sinning and being forgiven their natures are not changed their lives are not changed the spirits are not transformed their hearts have not been transformed but peter the apostle said we have forgiveness praise the lord for that but beyond forgiveness we have a new nature the nature of christ himself the nature that is opposed to sin the nature that is opposed to sinning then he goes on to say it is by these that he may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's corruption everywhere in the world. But coming to Christ makes us to escape the corruption that's in the world. If you think of politics, there's corruption there. Think about the schools, educational system, there's corruption there. And think about industry, there's corruption there. But it says, wherever you are, wherever you live now, any community, or maybe you are in any kind of um, area of work corruption is there but if you are born again it says he has delivered us and we escape from the corruption in any part of the world then after we are born again we are saved it says we don't just fold our hands praise the lord i'm saved i'm going to heaven there's something to do look at verse five and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith that faith by which you are saved must not just remain isolated add to that faith virtue and to virtue add knowledge and to knowledge add temperance temperance means self-control self-discipline you discipline your mouth you discipline your ears you discipline your eyes you discipline your feet you discipline your hands you discipline your personality it's not everything that is suggested to you to say that you will say it's not everything suggested to you that you should put on you will put on there is temperance self-control and self-discipline add that to your faith it goes on to say and to temperance add patience and to patience add godliness godliness is god likeness it's like you want to live like god what god loves you love that's godliness what god hates you hate that's godliness and that if god were to be here in front of you beside you what you will do in the physical immediate visible presence of god that's what you are going to do that's godliness and then to that godliness add brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness a charity verse 8 for if these things be in you and about all this is me talking about what you are adding your faith is abounding the virtue is abounding the knowledge is abounding the self-control is not diminishing it's increasing abounding the patience is not decreasing it's increasing abounding godliness abounding brotherly love abounding brotherly kindness abounding it says if these things be in you and abound they make you that she shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but he that lacketh these things he that says i'm saved i'm born again no virtue no addition of knowledge no addition of temperance no self-control no addition of patience no addition of godliness no addition of brotherly, brotherly kindness he says he lacks all these things he's blind i cannot see afar off and he has forgotten 
that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Verse 11, for so an entrance shall be ministered or granted unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray it will be ours in Jesus' name. Our heavenly citizenship and eternal rewards. Three points to consider. Number one. Condition for citizenship in the promised kingdom. Condition for citizenship in the promised kingdom. He has promised us a kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. And there are conditions to be fulfilled. Number two, continuation of citizens in the permanently established world. The word of God that is established. If we're going to see him on the final day, if we're going to be with him on that final day, there's a continuation of citizens in the permanently established world. Number three, consecration of citizens to his preeminent enduring work. There's a work as committed into our hands, an enduring work, a lasting work. And it's preeminent. And we consecrate ourselves if we're citizens of the kingdom to that work. Number one, condition of citizenship in the promised kingdom. We're looking at John chapter 3. John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 3. Here the Lord Jesus Christ told a religious man, and as he told this religious man about entering the kingdom, even though the man was religious, he didn't understand. Look at chapter 3 of John verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, except a man be born again saying that religion is not enough going to church coming to church is not enough observing easter christmas is not enough having some spiritual or religious ceremonies that's not enough following some rules and regulations of a denomination that's not enough i'm paying my deal i'm doing my best it's not enough I'm morally good, I'm morally sound, I'm a man of principle, a woman of principle is not enough, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again. I've been born once. My parents born again. My parents believers, daddy and mommy are believers. Yes, they gave back to you first once there is a born again experience you must come to god yourself no matter who you are a child born by christian parents or a man a woman who has been religious all his life and has memorized different parts of the bible all that is not enough to be a citizen of the heavenly kingdom he must be born again look at verse 4 nicodemus says unto him how can a man be born when he is old nicodemus realized what jesus was talking about that this born again experience is for the young and the old and nicodemus said jesus look at me i'm old already and this thing you are talking about, I've been with the members of the Sanhedrin. I've been a ruler among the religious people in the land. I never heard of being born again. How is it that I now need to be born again? It says in verse 4, can he enter the second time 
the second time he understood the word again again means the second time again second time you were born once physical you must be born the second time now but not physical spiritual this is where nicodemus missed the point he thought the first one physical birth second one physical birth and the only way physical birth can take can take place again is that i go back to my mother and then i come out again but this second one is not physical it is spiritual and supernatural but he asked the question can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born and jesus answered look at this now verse 5 verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit this one is spiritual of water is the word of god the word of god is referring to there as water because the word cleanses us the word makes us clean and it's like water that cleanses and then it says of the spirit except that happens you cannot see the kingdom of god but six that which is born of the flesh is flesh that's physical born of the flesh is flesh that gives you all your physical fleshly characteristics eyes to see ears to hear the heart that beats that circulates the blood in your body and the bones and everything around you everything you have that makes you to live in the physical world that's the flesh and it's because you are born once look at the second part of that verse and that which is born of the spirit a spirit this one is spiritual and the physical birth gave you the physical attributes and qualities and all the physical qualities that you have you're able to walk you're able to talk you're able to see you're able to hear all that is physical but now spiritual what gives you the ability to walk in the way of the lord in the watch of the lord what gives you the ability to stand as a real christian is this spiritual thing now is this spiritual thing now that which is born of the spirit is spirit but seven marvel not nicodemus marvel not old man marvel not religious woman marvel not a boy or girl born by christian parents marvel not that i said unto thee ye must be born again they say must ye must be born again to be a citizen of that heavenly kingdom ye must be born again it's telling us now in matthew chapter 18 matthew chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 1 at the same time came the disciples unto jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven disciples of jesus christ were very slow in understanding the call into the kingdom they were thinking of the kingdoms of this world and they knew the hierarchy in the kingdoms of the world they know that if you think of the kingdom of the world there's one man at the top over there then you have the next in command and then the next in command and then as you grade them up like that you want to ascend to the very height that is maybe you are the, just a counselor in the local government and then you become like a governor in a state and then you become like a vice president of that country and then you become the president eventually and they were thinking of the kingdom of god like the kingdom of this world and they thought how are we going to aspire to be the greatest in the kingdom but jesus christ had to tell them that his kingdom is not like the kingdom of this world because many people who do not understand they still have that mind of the lord of uh, the disciples of the lord and when they come into a religious gathering they're not thinking of how can i enter the kingdom of god how can i be a real child of god all they are thinking about what's my position here what's my level of authority here 
and what can you say over here about me so that i know my position tell me i know whether i'm going to stay or not put your finger there in matthew i'm coming back to matthew but look at john chapter 18 john chapter 18 verse 36 jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world my kingdom is not of this world the kingdom we are talking about is not a physical thing it's not a political thing many people do not understand that they turn religion into politics they come to a gathering of the people of God and all they aspire to is I want to be the greatest I want to be the highest I show me what that religious gathering uh, recognizes as real significant position that's my goal but Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight then would my servants fight have you read in the newspaper sometimes how there's fighting in some religious entities they say it's a denomination it's a church and there you find that maybe there's a particular position that that religious denomination counts as very important and this fellow feels I, I have to be there the other one fed the other fellow says that's my right that's my position and then there is fighting and if uh, if they are not careful they even begin to have the powers of darkness to fight each other or they use uh, whatever it is connections they have to fight each other or they might use uh, physical blows to fight each other so that that position will be theirs but jesus said the position we have in a religious organization does not matter that my kingdom is not of this earth if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight and then it goes on to say that i should not be delivered to the jews but now is my kingdom not from hence as you come to this uh, assembly and you come to worship with us you might have been coming for three years or five years or ten years the important thing is not what position do you hold that's not important what key do you hold what authority do you have the important thing is we're on a journey on our way to heaven want to make sure that we are citizens of the heavenly kingdom want to make sure before it becomes too late we fulfill the conditions of being in that heavenly kingdom i'm coming back now to matthew chapter 18 verse 1 at that at the same time came the disciples unto jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said verily i say unto you except ye be converted your disciples except ye be converted they were religious except ye be converted they profess to be following christ already except ye be converted conversion is a change a change when you convert something to another thing that's a change you know sometimes you take a uh, paper that scraps of paper you're using there you see it you see it there they collect everything together you pass it through a particular machine and as you pass through that machine it converts that paper to another kind of paper soft tissue that we can use in other places it's the same conversion process there is a machine this is spiritual now we will pass your life through the blood of jesus through the oppression of the spirit of god and the machinery of the oppression of the spirit of god then changes you and converts you and it, when you come out on the other side of that machine of that oppression of the spirit of god you are not like you were when you went in into that machine 
there's a change there's a transformation there is a complete total conversion that's what jesus was saying except you be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven i pray we'll enter in jesus name second peter chapter three in second peter chapter three what do you mean from verse nine second peter chapter three looking at verse nine it tells us the lord is not slack concerning his promise but he is long suffering towards us so that not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance look at that verse again that he is christ is coming and the lord is not slack concerning his promise of coming because when he comes he's going to take us to that heavenly kingdom he'll take us from earth he'll take us to heaven why has he not come because of you if you are not saved he wants you to be saved he's waiting for you why has he not come he wants you to get ready he said if i came yesterday where would you be if i come today where will you be he said he's not slack he's eager to come he's eager to set up his kingdom and he's eager to take the people who are ready but he says he has compassion towards you he says he's long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish what does that mean those who do not make it when he comes they will perish they may have position in a religious assembly they will perish they may have recognition recognition of the state recognition of the nation recognition in politics recognition in industry if they are not born again they will perish they may have recognition in a church like this if they are not born again they will perish that's why jesus christ is waiting and then it says but that all shall come all shall come come to church i said is willing he wants all shall come to church answer me no to come to what tell me out loud repentance coming to church is not enough there are many people that have come to church many people have come to a gathering many people have come to a conference many people have come to a retreat many people have come to whatever it is they have come to a ministry but it says he wants all to come to repentance you want to check out because god has records in heaven he knows those who have come to repentance and those are the people that are candidates for the kingdom of god the citizens of the kingdom if somebody comes to church and doesn't come to repentance it's not there yet if somebody comes into a ministry into a fellowship into an assembly into a congregation and he has not come to repentance it's not there yet if somebody comes to deeper life as an organization but he has not come to deeper life as to a transformation of life and his life is now deep not shallow he has, he's not there yet if somebody comes to you know religion and he doesn't come to repentance he's not there yet that's why the lord is saying he's waiting for us he's waiting for us it's not just coming to preaching it's not coming to you know i'm a minister i'm a member of such and such i have this i have that that's not it that we come to repentance i pray you'll come in jesus name look at verse 10 but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night the lord is saying it's not waiting indefinitely if he waits and waits and waits for us and we say we're still busy after all i've come to church the rest is simple after all i've come to deeper life the rest is simple after all i've come into service the rest is simple if we wait indefinitely he is not going to wait indefinitely the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise 
and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the walls that are therein, shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, you understand that? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, do you understand? Look at that. What manner of persons ought she to be in all holy conversation and godliness? It says everything on earth will be, will be burnt up. It's like when Noah was telling the people in his own generation. He was building the ark. And they were busy. They were building a business. They were busy. They were trying to have certificates. They were busy. They were trying to build families. They were busy. They wanted this. That's my project. They wanted this. That's my goal. They wanted this. That's my business. They wanted this. Education is the number one thing for me. If I don't have that certificate, nothing else will work. And Noah was saying, get ready, call me to the ark. Be a citizen of the kingdom. Of the kingdom of righteousness they said uncle noah daddy noah brother noah they hold on to that one we must finish this eventually god did not wait for them anymore he will not wait indefinitely and the rain began and then the floods came they were all swept away and jesus said so shall it be at the time of the coming of the son of man that many people they'll be surprised but you tell me all the certificates we gather together i had the first degree i'm running after the second degree i'm running after this other degree i'm traveling overseas i want another degree i want this profession everything is going to be burnt up i have this business i must establish another business i hear that my, my secondary school classmate he has is in charge is a manager a director over 10 companies look at me here i must compete with him i was better than him brighter than him when we were in school and if he is now chairman or director or manager over 10 areas of business i must make it up to 12 and then you are running after this and running after that everything will be burnt up i'm amazing i hear that so and so is a millionaire and they are now counting in our country and they are saying there are this number of millionaires now in this nation and then you look at yourself and say what what am i doing i must wake up i must become one of these millionaires too they even count it now they count it all over the world and they say that now they are not counting millionaires in naira they are counting millionaires in you know the uh, sterling pounds or whatever and they say there are these numbers in the world and you say i must make the list i must make the list i must make the list do you know that when christ comes it says everything will be burnt up all the money all the banks all the industry everything is going to a burnt up why don't you prepare for eternity come back and look at that again chapter 3 verse 10 of second peter but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt i pray that will be wise in jesus name verse 12 looking looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore beloved seeing that when ye look for such things be diligent that she may be found that she may be found of him in peace without spot and without blame 
That's what the Lord is telling us. Get ready and fulfill the condition of being a citizen of that promised kingdom. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. But Christ, as a son, over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope unto the end. There's no time to backslide. There's no time to play the fool. There's no time to go out of the kingdom and then, excuse me, Lord Jesus, I forgot some pleasures in the world when I was coming in. I need to pick that up again. I'll come back. You may not come back before he comes. My friends in the world are calling me and they're saying, even in this situation now, this is coming up there, that is coming up there. I know it's of the world, but I'm going to love the world. I'll come back. You may not come back. It's this marriage that is my real challenge. And I know the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I know that. But a time is running out. And I need to get married now. When am I going to have children? Uh, Lord, excuse me, I'm coming back. I want to go and be, I'll come back and repay it. I know, I know the way of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'll come back. And then you go. You may not come back before he comes. And he says, it's the people that hold on unto the end. I pray you'll be wise in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. Take it, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Take heed. Lest there be an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. That well, I know. I know without willingness, no man shall see the, that I know. I know it very well. But you know, in my situations, in a place of work, if you carry this holiness too far and you carry it to the place of work, they say steal, you will not steal. They say change accounts, you will not change accounts. They say modify retreat, you, are, you modify receipt, you are not going to modify, modify the receipt. If they say that, you know, help the people that are fraudulent and cover up and you are not going to cover up, they say you are not going to make it in the industry, in, in the present age. And, and, I, and I know it is wrong, but I, I, I'm... I'm I need my position. I need my promotion. In this place of work, I will do this. Lord, I'll come back. You think you'll come back. You may not. You may not. That's why it says, don't allow your heart, an evil heart of unbelief, to deceive you. It says, do not depart from the living God, in verse 13, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hiding through the deceitfulness of sin for a for we are partakers we are made partakers of christ if we hold if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end i pray you'll hold this steadfast unto the end in jesus name look at chapter four chapter four verse one let us therefore fear Lest the promise be left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Any of you should seem to come short of it, almost saved but lost. Almost entering in but denied. Lest any of you should seem to come short of it. Then it says, for in verse 2, unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not having mixed with faith, not being mixed with faith in them that heard. For we, which have believed, do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn. In my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Look at verse 6. See, therefore, it remains that some must enter therein, 
and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief they didn't believe that christ will come and that the judgment will come so suddenly they say we we'll still have time we we'll still have time noah we are coming don't worry keep on building the ark you'll be surprised you'll be surprised you'll find me there one day come today tomorrow may be too late no i don't worry about me i said i'm coming i'll be there i'm the, i'll be there that flood of course of course if it comes at all they didn't believe it will come if it comes at all at the moment it's coming like this we'll be there and then they were busy on other things but noah he kept on a preacher of righteousness he kept on building and kept on preaching he was preaching and building only his family believed him eventually when the flood began it was the lord himself that shut up noah and his family into that ark and the lord closed the door locked the door and took the key away all those people that said we're coming we're coming they began they were knocking at the door of the ark uncle noah brother noah daddy noah open to us we're ready now when god was ready you were not ready when you are ready now god is not ready enter while you may that's why it says in verse 6 that seeing therefore a three minute that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first promised and preached and proclaimed entered not in because of unbelief verse 11 let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief point number two continuation of citizens in the permanently established world continuation of citizens in the permanently established world once the lord gives the word that word is established forever it is not something that is reviewed and edited day after day or year after year that when was that word given oh it's more than two thousand years ago now and the old testament many many past more than four thousand years ago now is due for revision no not the word of god is due for a kind of reveal not the word of god is permanently forever eternally established we need to understand that that the same word he has said and the same condition of repentance that he required at that time that is still the condition that he has today look at psalm 119 verse 89 psalm 119 verse 89 forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven the condition of entering in forever O Lord it is settled in heaven the demand of God to fellowship with him here on earth and in heaven forever O lord that is settled in heaven the demand of holiness without which no man shall see the lord forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven the necessity of preparedness if we're going to see the lord if it's not just religion and then after religion hell if it's not just earthly worship and then after worship hell if it is not just a social gathering after social gathering hell if it is for heaven the word that takes us to heaven it says forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven let's look at matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 35 Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away the heaven there is the sky all the stars the sun and the moon 
heaven and earth the ground and all the seas heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away but my words shall not pass away did he say that many will take the broad road and when they take that broad road they will land in hellfire eventually that watch will not pass away it's established did he say it is the few that find the narrow way that will get to the kingdom of god that's what he said that word will not pass away did he say there is the kingdom of darkness as so the kingdom of his dear son yes that's what he said that word shall not pass away did he say except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of god that's what he said and that word shall not pass away heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away and that's the reason why you want to understand that if heaven is your goal if it's not just religion if it's not just social gathering if it's not just they have their church we have our church if it is not just the popular thing the regular thing to do on sunday like this everybody goes somewhere i must go somewhere and i choose to go to that place they call deeper life if it is not just that we are there just to be there if you have something in mind if it is to get to this heaven it says it is on the basis of continuation in the word of god john chapter 8 john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 30 and verse 31 john chapter 8 we're reading from verse 30 it says in verse 30 as he spake these words many believed on him there's some people that have historical faith i believe 19 such and such about uh, 15 years ago now remember i believe that's historical other people say you yeah, i just remember that when we were in school or in the secondary school and some of these people came and they are scripture union people and then they said something they said if you want to believe on the lord jesus christ raise up your hand i raised up my hand and since that time secondary school class whatever i believed that's historical look at what it says in verse 31 as he spake these words many believed on him in verse 31 now then said jesus to those that which believed on him if ye continue if ye continue 15 years ago i believed if ye continue daddy and mommy brought me to this and then they said one day we're having a devotion in the house and then daddy said my child do you believe on the lord jesus christ and then let me i believed on the lord jesus if ye continue i remember my friend came to my house and then he said I, i've got something and since you are my friend i'm going to share this with you and that day i remember my friend led me and i believe if ye continue it is the continuation that we have in the word of god that makes us to know very surely i am getting there look at verse 31 jesus says unto those jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word not just continue in the church there are people that continue in the church they don't continue in the world it's not that i continued i'm a worker they continue in the work they don't continue in the world before you were married you had the world you live by the world now you are married and you continue in the world before you had children because if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me i want the lord to give me a miracle child i'm looking for a baby i'm looking for a baby because of that i clean up my ways i put this right i put that right because i don't want the lord to see anything that will hinder me from having this miracle baby now you've got the miracle baby do you continue in the world it's not just that i continue in church 
I continue in denomination, I continue in religion. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You'll be free in Jesus' name. And let's look at First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, for, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, when ye received the word of God, when ye received, you cannot continue in it if you don't receive it. If when you hear it, you say, that's what they want to preach today. I don't receive that one. I know what I came for. I'm looking for prayer. I'm looking for miracle. I'm looking for promotion. I'm looking for this. All this one they are saying. Now when it comes to my turn and they say the one I know comes to me. I know it's meant for me. Then that one I will get. You're not for the kingdom of God. It says, when ye received the word of God which ye had of us. Ye received it not as the word of men. You don't count the word of God as the opinions of men, but as, as it is in truth, the word of God which effectually walketh also in you that believe. When you actually receive it, it will work in you. And let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 11. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. They received the word with all readiness of mind. What does that mean? When they were coming to the gathering, they were coming to the assembly, they prepared their minds. Lord, speak to me today. Lord, if there is still anything that is missing in my being qualified to enter into that kingdom of yours, speak to me today. Lord, if there's something I'm unintentionally, unknowingly overlooking in my lives, and I feel everything is all right, and you know something is not all right, speak to me today. They came ready to receive the word of God. They received that word with all readiness of mind. Lord, I think that this is what I need, but you know my need more than I do. I've been feeling this pain on my side. Uh, of recent and I hope today I'm here going to hear the word of faith that will challenge this thing I'm feeling there and will drive it away but Lord that's what I think I need but if you know I have a greater need a deeper need a different need than this little pain on my side no problem speak to me I'm ready whatever you say whatever I think that's not the that's not what matters whatever it is you want to say say that to me that's what these people are. That's how they made heaven. And if we're going to make it to heaven, this is the readiness of mind we ought to have. Look at that verse again in verse 11. These were more noble than those in Tesnaica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and they searched the scriptures daily. And they searched the scriptures daily. How about that? I've gone to the Bible study. I have an outline in my hand. And the teacher had taught us on that outline. I go back again, Lord, I will not miss a judge. I will not miss a teacher. Maybe when the preacher was preaching, maybe when the teacher was teaching, there were, there were some words that just, you know, just escaped me. I'm going to go over again. If I have enough money, I'm going to buy that message. I want to search it again and search it again. I want this word to so saturate me in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, in my brain. I want the word of God to so encircle me that all the other influences coming from my community will not have the better part of me. 
That's why they were searching the scriptures daily to see as those six were sold. And it is the continuity in that you receive the word, you obey the word, obedience to the word that grants us this privilege eventually. James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, when this, when your focus is to get to heaven, you'll not be bothered about that office or that privilege or that position or that whatever it is that people are running after. As if they are fighting now for positions in the church, recognition in the church, like the people of the world fight for their political positions. James chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. That's where the blessing lies. Be ye doers of the word. And not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word. And not a doer. It's like unto a man. Beholding his natural face in a glass. But he beholdeth himself. And goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Isn't that what happens to almost all people that go to church, that attend services? Isn't that the condition of some who come to our church over here too? Old members and newcomers that will hear the word of God. And if you ask us the second day, what definite change did the word of yesterday make in your life? What permanent change did the word of last week make in your life? What irreversible transformation took place in your life because of what you had last month? We have forgotten. We heard, we prayed, we appreciated. We love the word, we mark the Bible, we take the note, but the note, the, the writing is on paper. It's not on our heart. It's not in our life. We cannot say this is the change that took place, the conversion that took place, the transformation that took place, the decision that I made. And I'm never to go back into that old thing anymore because of what I heard. Look at that verse again. In verse 24, for he beholdeth himself, and he goeth his way, and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he was. Let there be a change. Verse 25, but whosoever, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, and continueth therein, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. I pray, I pray that the blessing of continuing in the word, obeying the word, will be ours in Jesus' name. Point number three, consecration. The consecration of citizens. The consecration of citizens to his preeminent and during war consecration what does that mean it means that your religion is worth something your faith is worth something we know what we pay in life if you're going to be well dressed that costs some money costs some effort if you're going to eat good food it, it costs, you pay, you pay for that. If you're going to have good education, apart from the money to buy books, apart from the money to buy all the electronic things that education now demands, like laptop and, you know, get into the internet and all that that it demands, apart from that, the hours of study. If we're going to have certificate, I'm going to ask you now, do you put so much value on your spiritual life do you put so much value on the ticket to get to heaven do you put so much value on the certificate that will allow you to enter into the kingdom of god that you spend as much time on spiritual things on preparedness and readiness like you spend for your education 
like you spend for buying food like you spend for you want to travel here travel there like you spend i want to get to america by all means and i must have this i must have this and they give all the conditions of having a visa or if it is uh, you know the resident permit you're looking for i must get that resident permit and you're making this contact and making this contact so and so is there i must be there do you make as much effort and then you say they're not going to change the rule for me they're not going to change their condition for me this is what they demand and then you screw yourself and you squeeze yourself and you train yourself and you discipline yourself and you go everywhere to rake and ransack every document they are asking for so that you'll be able to qualify to go to a place here on earth for the kingdom of god are you like that do you make such an effort and no they are not going to change the condition for me to get to heaven they are not going to change the prerequisite for me to get there because of that the price to pay i will pay in second samuel chapter 24. second samuel chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 24 and the king said unto her own name but i will surely buy each of thee at a price neither will i offer burnt offerings unto the lord my god of that which cost me nothing of that which cost me nothing does your christian life cost you anything at all does your christian profession cost you anything at all even in coming here to have the service does coming cost you anything at all if the district does not provide the bus then how can i go to church but your place of work does not provide the bus you get to the place of work your school does not provide the bus you get to your school when you are going for that interview the people to interview you for a job they do not provide uh, maybe a bus pass for you but you get to that place but when coming to church if the local pastor location pastor this pastor whoever pastor is there if they don't provide transportation for me that means they don't want me there i will not be there does coming to service cost you anything getting to heaven does it cost you anything that you repent repentance if there's restitution to make you make the restitution if there is self-discipline control your mouth control your eyes control your ears control your body your flesh are you willing to pay that price or is it just like if jesus wants me in heaven good luck if he doesn't want me in heaven then i go to hell he must pay the whole price i don't have any price to pay there is a price to pay and our serving the lord shall cost us something after all if you pay so much to have the things of the world why can't you pay all that christ requires so that this truth you'll have this truth and you will keep this truth in jesus name give me a good amen over there yeah. we're looking at proverbs chapter 23 Proverbs chapter 23, and we're looking at it in verse, in verse 23. Proverbs 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth. What do you buy without cost? You buy clothes, you buy that, you pay the price. You buy shoes, you buy that, you pay the cost. And whatever it is, even certificate. You're not supposed to buy certificate, but even some people, they're so eager. They must have certificate. And if their brain is not able to pay the price of having the certificate, if they cannot burn the midnight oil and read and study and have the certificate, they're even going to spend money to buy the certificate. And of course, getting a job, many people, they even buy the job. They may not be able to function in that place of work, but since they're part of the world, they even buy that if those people are willing to pay whatever price to have that we're talking about even work how about those who buy wives 
you know, apart from paying dowry that's you know sometimes there are people that are they walk in the flesh it's no more i know the will of god then i see the you know the leadership and then they say okay go and see the lady and then they also will pray and know the will of god we're not ready for that anymore we now buy wives and then we're buying scarf for them and buying dresses for them and buying shoes for them and then and those uh, women too they make themselves so cheap that they're receiving all that and then maybe about two years later after the man have been buying and buying and buying and making deposit or buying this and buying that and then we'll say i know the will of god who doesn't know the will of god even if, if that's the way to do it they buy wives and then when they lay it on you heavily the dowry and all the income you ever thought of in your life the family of that lady says this is what they demand then you begin to run up and down up and down to buy the wife and now to come to the kingdom of god and to buy the consecration buy the truth with your whole heart and give up whatever it is that will compete with the truth of the word of God in your life. We are not ready to do that and we think we are going to heaven. Heaven to some people is so cheap. But there is a price to pay. And I pray that God will make us wise. We will pay the price in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it not. You know, of course, all the things that are very important and costly to you, you don't sell that. When you have the certificate, you toiled, you, you, you worked, you read, you studied. If you're a wise man, you're keeping that certificate. You don't sell that. And when you have a wife, and then you have prayed and prayed and prayed, you said, is this one? The lady says no. And then you prayed and prayed and prayed again. You know, the lady says no. And then you call your friends, and then you fast and you pray. Eventually, after, after praying with consecration, oh Lord, give me this wife, I will serve you. Oh Lord, do this for me. This is the only need in my life. This must happen. I don't want to go the way of the world. I don't want to go to the village. I don't want to do this and that. Oh Lord, give this to me. And after, and God sees your sincerity and after you pray like that and then you get the wife do you sell do you give up the wife and you know your friend wants a woman also oh, i can lend you my wife do you do that tell me i said you do that no i got that by prayer i got that that is mine i know the price i paid for it you when you get you don't give it up high about the truth the truth for some people is so cheap that they will not give up the wife they will not give up a husband they will not give up certificate but they can give up the truth just for a flimsy excuse but the lord is telling us if we're going to get to the kingdom of god buy the truth and sell it not this truth it will abide with us forever in jesus name that's what the Lord is telling us. If you are going to work for the Lord so that you can have reward, when you get to the other side, this, you get the truth, you sweat for it, you read the Bible, you search the word of God, you listen to the messages, you get on your knees, you consecrate, you lay everything upon the altar. Oh Lord, qualify me for service here, qualify me for worship up on high as well. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. And then he tells us, he tells us in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 14 Hebrews chapter 12 we're looking at verse 14 it says follow peace with all men follow peace with all men follow peace with all men stop there for a moment you see it depends on the value you put on this eternal life we're talking about you're going for an exam and you know that the door will close at nine o'clock anybody who doesn't enter into that exam hall by nine o'clock that's over it means that you miss that exam and then you enter into the boss and the boss conductor and that day when he woke up he was looking for somebody to fight and then he picked you're looking at your time i must be there by nine before nine o'clock i must be settled down because this exam i prepared very well for this exam i've read everything i ought to read and then you pay what you ought to pay and the bus conductor decides that money is going to pick on you 
and you are the one is going to delay and fight and he's saying that no i'm not going to give you the proper change and then you are there you are again but you know you are going for exam even if you will argue any other day because of the exam you are going for and you know that the door will clo close at nine o'clock you leave that man you follow peace with that man not because he's a peaceful man not because he, he, he merits that but because of where you are going because you want to reach there the same if you know you are going to heaven and if you know that christ can come at any time and if you know that once the door is shut many people will begin to say i was there i listened to the message we edged together we were what they had written will you preach on us and jesus will say i never knew you ye workers of iniquity depart from me because you don't want that if anybody on the way wants to fight with you he wants to make trouble you follow peace will say well he doesn't have a place to go i have a place i'm going you keep you are at peace with your neighbors you're at peace with everybody because of the place you are going i pray you'll not miss it in jesus name follow peace with with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord that's the condition there and the lord is not going to change his condition for anyone looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and then it goes on to say and and thereby many be different lest there be a funny any fornicator or profane person as Esau who sold who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright for one morsel of meat sold his birthright a moment of feeding the stomach the stomach took his birthright from him i pray that nothing will take this birthright away from you for you know how that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears the place of repentance is still there today the place of restoration is still there today and the place of renewal spiritual resurrection is still there today as we come and we say lord if there is anything on top of my mind if there is anything important to me it is that this heaven i will get there you will get there i said you will get there but you must fulfill the condition are you born again are you a real child of God? Is the Adamic nature inside? Is it dealt with? The carnality in your life? Is it dealt with? The worldliness? Are you only on Sunday? There's godliness. But from Monday to Saturday, six days, there's worldliness. If there's only godliness for one day and worldliness for six days, how are you going to make it? But there is now time for repentance and time for restoration and time for spiritual renewal and resurrection that you say lord this i will not miss it this one i will not miss it any other thing that will go will have to go any other thing i will abandon i will have to abandon this kingdom of god i'll be there for 10 years a hundred years a thousand years a million years ever and ever and ever i will be there i said i will be there why don't you rise up then and call upon the Lord? Check your life. Check, examine your life. What is age that will hinder you? Is it that, you know, you have lost salvation and then you are just going about to a counterfeit experience and counterfeit a profession and counterfeit a confession? I'm saved, I'm saved. Historical salvation. Where is the salvation today? Where is the change of life? the salvation the conversion and the total turning around why are you not serious with your life on the final day god is not going to change any condition for you or for anybody else you are asking the lord now oh lord make me ready oh lord make me ready oh lord make me ready pray and the lord will answer your prayer then you will know now i am ready salvation is there holiness is there godliness is there sanctification is there let the lord make you ready today